Let's talk about how to get started with SP Page Builder. Now that you have the SP Page Builder extension installed into your Joomla site, you can now access the SP Page Builder tab located within the top menu bar. Hovering over this tab will display a variety of options, a few which we will cover in this chapter. Let's begin by clicking the Pages link. This will bring you to the Pages section, where all of your previously created pages will be organized. This section is incredibly useful, as you can find a ton of information here regarding the pages that make up your website, as well as the ability to manage those pages. As pages are created, they will be saved and stored here, in the Pages section, to be accessed again in the future. Use the search bar to search for specific pages, or use the search tools for more advanced search options such as revealing previously deleted pages or pages that fall within a defined category. First, let's see how we can make a new page so that we can begin editing and building a website. You can begin by clicking the New button on the top left, which will bring you to a new blank page. When a new page is created, it will contain no elements within its structure. The first step for every new page is to name that page and you will not be able to save any new edits made to this page until it has been named. You can provide a title to this page by filling out the title field here. Once a title has been defined, you can save the page by clicking Save, and a pop-up message will indicate if your save was successful. SP Page Builder additionally has several more save options when it comes to managing the status of your page. Next to the Save button, there is a Save and Close button which simply saves the page and then closes the page safely. This button is a useful time saver and it saves and closes the page at the same time as the name would suggest. Next to that is the Save and New button, which as the name implies, will save this page, close this page, and create a new blank page. This as well is a simple time saver and an easy way to make new pages quickly while saving the previous. And last but not least, there is the Save as Copy button. This option will save your current page and duplicate your page as an identical copy. You will notice that when this option is clicked, your new duplicated page will need a new title. The duplicated page's title will be automatically provided a default name, but you always have the option to change it here in the title bar. Once all your changes for this page have been completed and you have saved your changes, you can close the page by clicking the close button. As we return to the pages section, you can see that our new pages have a green check mark to the left of their name. This means the page is active and published and can be viewed by accessing that page's URL. Pages will by default start as a published page, but can be unpublished easily. In this instance, we can temporarily unpublish a page until we are ready to publish it by clicking the green check mark. Now that the page is unpublished, a red X will display. Unpublished pages can still be accessed and edited using the editor, as well as be previewed through the editor. But an unpublished page cannot be accessed using that page's unique URL, and instead will produce a 404 error. To republish a page so that it can be properly viewed again, just click the red X to convert it back to a green check mark. Use the publishing feature to hide pages that are still in development or no longer need to be publicly viewed. You can do more to manage your page than just unpublish it. If a page needs to be deleted and removed from your site, you can completely delete the page. Doing so will not only delete the page, but all the contents within that page as well. To delete a page or pages, click the page using the checkbox on the left and click the Trash button. This will remove all the selected pages in your site. Trashed pages are not permanently deleted, but rather moved to a deleted section on your site. To view all of your previously deleted pages, click the Search Tools button dropdown and change your search status to Trashed. Now, a list of all of your previously trashed pages will display. Here, you have two options. You can either restore the page or permanently delete the page. If you would like to restore a page, 
Simply click the trash can icon to reverse the status to become a published page once again. On the other hand, to permanently delete your page, just click the empty trash button. You will be asked to confirm this decision because upon doing so, the page will be gone forever and will be impossible to recover at any point in the future. To return to your list of published pages, you can change your search status back to the default settings by clicking the clear button. Each page row here in the pages section of SP Page Builder offers a bit more data than just the name and publishing status of the page. In this column, the author of the page is revealed. If you have multiple users working within your Joomla site and each with their own Joomla account, this data can be useful in determining who made which page. Next to this is the access column, which indicates the level of access needed to access this page. Joomla allows visitors of your site to be assigned various levels of administrative access. If a page has an access level of public, that means anyone of any access level can view the page. All pages will default with an access level of public, but certain pages may need stricter access if that page is not intended for public access. Still, most pages will want to keep their access as public, so new visitors will be able to view them. Lastly, there are two more data points for each page, hits and ID. The hits column will display how many times your page has been viewed, and the ID is simply the ID number associated with that page. Together, you can use all of this data and options within the Pages section of SP Page Builder to successfully create and manage all of your individual pages.